Hi, welcome to a quick episode of ToddFun.com. What I'm going to show is how I scrap parts so quickly and easily so they can get them stored away until later. But what I like to do is save the parts that are usable. Some of the screws and stuff like that, they get, they get saved. You know, you get a pile of screws, of course, and you get a lot of these boards. And uh, I don't want to spend the time every after every time I get one of these to desolder stuff. So I just want to, you know, I want to salvage the heat sinks, some of the components, maybe a relay or two. These are, you know, these are expensive and they're fully functional. Um, and so, as you see, the the board is still on there. And uh, the concept is, you just take a, a good uh, metal shears, and you just get in there and you just uh, you just start snipping. You just uh, you can you can you can cut the pieces you want out real quick, and then you you throw those aside because that's all you have to save. And you don't have to spend the afternoon on soldering things. So like on this board, um, let's say I want some of these relays here. I just and this this phenolic board is pretty easy to cut. This isn't even fiberglass or anything. You just take a whack at it. This probably isn't anything new to some people, but you know there you got a really heavy duty 1.5 uh, ohm uh, power resistor there. And you can always research it later. If it doesn't have printing on it, then don't save it because you don't want the hassle trying to figure out what something is. Um, and so, I mean, if as long as it's got good printing on it, you can always look it up and, and there, you know, you, you just throw that in the, in the safe pile. And I'll do that to all these. I'll, the things I usually focus on are things that are expensive or just things I don't like buying, like all these heat sinks. And there may even be some component on that that I, that I would want. I don't save bulky things that are just nonsensical, but I'll, I'll save things like regulators and uh, and uh, maybe op amps are, uh, and and sometimes uh, isolation. And then these another thing is if you got big things that are standoff like that, like this power resistor, sometimes you can just snip them off. And then and as long as you can read what they are, and you save that for later. In fact, I've already done that. I went through the board originally, and I just all the ones I could just snip off, I snip off because those can be filed away quite easily. But there, you got that big aluminum or aluminium heat sink and a component on it too, if you wanted to research what it was. Here's an example where I want to save the traces. These are buttons; they're all nice and soldered in. With a lot of solder joints. There's no point in salvaging these type of tactile buttons, but I may want to have a control panel for some project someday which is button controlled and I want to keep the traces on the back so I kind of plan you know I want to keep as little as possible so that I don't have a lot of stuff in my bin but I can cut across there and then I can look at these traces and go well I can get to most of those traces if I stay behind this line I'll have solder points I can get to and then I just trim it up a little bit and there and there's even some resistors in there if you needed them if I was a little bit more careful I could have left all the resistors in because they might be in there for like pull up, pull down resistors, and they would already be. Well, they're kind of knocked out now, but if I'd have been more careful, I could have salvaged that with a bit more of a higher cut. Uh, these phenolic boards crack a lot more. They they fracture more than say fiberglass. Fiberglass boards you can shave them real clean and they don't shatter like that. There, I didn't crack the board, and I made a nice little small control board I can keep. So in about 20 minutes worth of work, this is what I have. Some springs, some buttons, um, audio, a visual audio board that I can use for some, I actually have a project in mind for that. Um, some high wattage resistors, a uh, small pile. This is from one television, this 27 inch television. Some uh, uh, relays, even power relays. Uh, I, I left this out because I'm not sure this is phenolic or some kind of plastic. I'm, I'm really not sure. I'm calling it phenolic, but it's certainly not uh, fiberglass board, but there we go. Um, pile of screws, of course. Um, I kept this not because I really want anything on it, but it's just very compact. It has lots of little surface mounts if I ever need them. And it's a good training board for doing the surface mount soldering and desoldering. So that's a nice little board to keep around. I get a whole pile of uh, heat sinks. I mean, geez, I don't have to buy any heat sinks for a while all different shapes and sizes and even some components like this is a good bridge rectifier a real good one for can handle quite a bit um, I don't know what all is on these but they all have a component on them so there's that um, some high voltage capacitors most capacitors I don't save but some of these are like 250 volt capacitors they're always kind of good to have a few laying around 
and then a couple of six ohm speakers if you need them. And that's it. That's uh, that's the loot from uh, from my television. This will all go into a small little box and get stuck away in my totes. And I'll uh, I'll sort through it some other day when I have time. And that's that's what 20 minutes of salvaging a TV. And I didn't salvage everything because really. Um, there's a lot more you can salvage from this television than this. I just don't want a giant 20-some inch television sitting in my in my lab, so I just wanted to get rid of it and get the general junk out that I wanted out quickly and to get the, get the rest uh, get the rest out of here. Thank you for joining.